Authority Alchemy. Authority Alchemy. The show for positioning yourself as the number one authority in your industry. Quickly turn your prospects into clients and clients into raving fans. Here are your hosts, Brian Horn and Jack Mize. Hey, welcome to episode one of Authority Alchemy. This is Jack Mize and I am here with... Brian Horn. That's it. Man, I've been looking forward to getting this uh, off the ground for quite some time now. And I know both of us have uh, gotten repeated requests for more, more, more on the authority, on the authority alchemy. And I think, you know, probably the appropriate thing to kick this off is explaining exactly what authority alchemy is. Is and I got to be honest with you, Brian. You're, you're the you're the guy that came up with that term, authority <laughs> alchemy. And I, I like the way it sounds. Sometimes I would forget. It. Let's see, what was it? Authority Alcacel, sir? What was it? It was. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. But it really is an, a, an appropriate term for exactly what we are doing um, in our business, what we're doing for the business of our clients, and exactly really what this show is going to be about. So I think that's where we can. Uh, uh, kind of set expectations for what folks can expect um, throughout uh, future episodes of Authority Alchemy. So, Brian, I guess a lot of folks that are already familiar with us know that you know both of us are in the uh, the business of creating authority, manufacturing reputation, celebrity um, for our clients uh, in all different types of fields. So, let's first start off with kind of debunking the whole myth of the authority and expert you know the old school and how many how many seminars have you been to or books have you read that say you know to be the expert all you have to do is just call yourself the expert and absolutely that's yeah that's been around forever where they would just say nobody's going to call you the expert you have to go out and claim it yourself just just call yourself an expert and and you've got it and that's uh, i don't know for years that's what was taught yeah, I think that's one of the big problems in, in even marketing today is, you know, you see online, look at me, I'm the expert. I Don't you get kind of weird when somebody says, hey, I'm the expert, Look at, or even they, they put that title on their business cards or their website, you know, so-and-so expert. Um, it's almost gone from being a business principle to almost a little bit of cheese factor there uh, oh, absolutely to, to calling yourself the expert and so i think you know we are going to hit this point hard to the point of being redundant authority and authority alchemy is not about calling yourself the expert in fact it's the opposite you should never need to call yourself the expert. Authority Alchemy is about positioning yourself in the right way, doing the things that are required, doing the things that are necessary to have others that will call you the expert, to have uh, your prospects, your customers call you the expert. But even above and beyond that, it's about uh, getting third party credible third party sources like national media all the way to your clients and prospects calling you the expert and right you know what have you seen with you know when we're when we were talking about third party credibility third party credibility sources national media what is the impact the difference between you calling yourself the expert versus having someone else call you the expert it goes back to to just trust because if it, you know, you calling yourself something, you're, you have a, you know, an end goal in mind and the person knows it. You know, like if I tell them I'm the you know, SEO expert, they know it's because I want them to buy something from me. Whereas if it's a local news show they see you on and they say, this is Brian Horn, the, the uh, you know, SEO expert, you're getting from a third party source who you already trust. I mean, if the, these national medias, even local medias, yeah, just spend millions and billions of dollars a year to sell people their trustworthy true news. I mean, even like you know, Fox News, one of the biggest cable news channels, theirs is a, uh, you know, what, you know, what's, their, what's their slogan? It's sort of like the uh, fair, fair and balanced. You know, there's hammers, fair and balanced, fair and balanced, with their, you know, the, the trustworthy news source. And, you know, that, that gets into your head. People believe it. 
It is and absolutely, it, and and that's even why when you see you see a lot of these uh, infomercials that are set up to look like uh, you know Larry King uh, um, style TV shows, yeah, because they want it to be because they know that that's what um, that implies, or at least the people that are watching it infer that trust that third party sources, and it goes back to the marketing principles of of social proof of of uh, testimonials why testimonials are so important because it's third party validation about you know for what you are doing and that you're um you know you're someone that's up to something you're someone that people should be listening to watching and um and and, and really doing business with who was it uh, uh hey i know everybody pronounces his name differently what is it robert um the, the Calad, Caladini, Kiladani, Candelabra. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I say Caladini. I'm, I'm actually friends with him on Facebook, believe it or not. Well, right there is his book, Influence. What is it? Yeah, it's Influence, right? Yeah, Influence. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, that right there is really kind of, if you want to get down to dissecting the power of authority and really why authority has so much effect, Influence is a book you should definitely check out because it'll actually go into the psychology um, of how that works, why it works, and even the subtleties of it. So that's a great book to uh, uh, to check out. And I think we could demonstrate this right now. So let's think about um, industry experts, gurus. All right, we always have there's business gurus in every different business, right? The big ones that people think about are the Donald Trumps and 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 folks like that. But what are some of the uh, guys? I know one of mine that I always look at is Dave Ramsey, financial in the financial industry, right? right? Mm-hmm. Um, what are some other ones? I know that you refer to um, uh, Doctor <coughs> oh, Oz, Doctor Oz, Susie Orman, and if get, then you can get into like the that's for more finance stuff. Then you move over to fitness things, and you have like Jillian Michaels, and even the one I, I get the biggest kick out of is Richard Simmons. That he is, you look at him, and he is he's he's absolutely insane. He's really not in that good of shape, yet he probably makes more money with fitness than just about anybody else for the last what last like thirty years or more that he's been making millions with fitness. You're telling and me you you can be successful in telling people what to do, even though you obviously. <laughs> Are, are lacking in your own discipline to do that? I, you know, I, I, you're saying that Richard Simmons is not a strapping man. <laughs> I, I would not tell it to his face; he'd probably cry. But I would not, I would not con- consider him a hor- terribly fit person. Okay, I, so not someone that you I, would I've, take. A, I've done that. Have you? Ever, I've gone to a doctor. What do you think? You, you go to a doctor, and I sit there, and I think this guy is bigger than I am. I smell cigarette smoke. You know, why am oh, I listening yeah. to this person to, to do this? But that's what it is. So well, let's, let's take example. Dave Ramsey, Dr. Oz, uh, Susie Arman. Now, are they necessarily the best and the brightest, the smartest people in their industries? No, not at all. I, mean, I, I think you've got local people that would know a lot more. And I, I was like, like Dr. Phil is another one who... I would, I would be one of the last people I would actually would probably actually want to go to once I really thought about actually if I was really you know concerned because he's you know <laughs> he's that terribly sharp. Didn't he have a diet book out but, once? He, he looked like yeah. he was a you know oh, I yeah, he's a I would say for yeah. men you know there's that fine line between a 42 waist and a 32 waist you know and I think it all depends on where he puts his pants on whether he's a fitness <laughs> guru I don't know. <laughs> That's right. You can pull your pants down a little bit more around your around your knees. <laughs> no, there it is. Uh, you have a pretty small waist when you measure them there. So, so if they're not the best and the brightest, if they aren't necessarily the smartest in their industry or know everything about everything in their industry, which, by the way, is something that we need to talk about. You know what actually defines an expert, but. Why are they considered the gurus of their industry? Why are they looked at as the authority? What, and, and this is a perfect example in that I don't believe I've ever heard Dave Ramsey call himself an expert. I don't think I've ever heard Dr. Oz or Susie Orman refer to themselves as an expert. Yet, they're given that title. They're given that position of authority. And why? Because the media tells them they are and when we say media credible third-party sources for instance dr oz and and even uh dr phil who's the person that just dump trucked authority onto those guys oh yeah oprah she's a queen of authority 
And oh. she she can make or break anything. When her you know, back when she had her book club, she could just say, "This is a good author," and you know, obscure you know author's first book would go to bestseller status and would be instant millionaires. And yeah, so that that's they have third party um, credibility. They have third party credibility of of. And even if it wasn't someone as huge as Oprah, just the fact that there were third parties. Think about even when when a friend recommends you go to a doctor or you go to even to try this restaurant. It's automatically got that that authority. It's already at a higher status because a, a third party, there's social proof, there's testimonials of others that say that this is good, that this is something that you should be doing. Now, that's just part of it. Part of it is get getting that third party. But the other thing that you notice is the Dave Ramsey's and the Dr. Oz's, those folks have books, especially like Dave Ramsey. Susie Orman, mm-hmm. they have the they have products, they have books, they have um, you know CD collections, they have uh, boot camps that you rarely hear about because they're not always on their radio show, on their TV show. They're not taking every opportunity to say I'm the expert, buy my stuff, because we all know there's a pretty big habit of folks out there that immediately, as soon as you see them, it's buy my stuff, buy my stuff. You know, I think mm-hmm. that comes from the days of when you only have 30 seconds on TV to make a commercial, you only have 15 seconds. It's, you know, I got buy my stuff, buy my stuff. You never hear these folks saying buy my stuff. And, but one of the interesting things is you have a lot of people saying, how can I buy their stuff? I want to, more i want to buy and i always say i hate selling but i love making people want to buy why is it that people want to buy their stuff even though they aren't outwardly and blatantly say i'm an expert buy my stuff outside of the third party credibility right just because they are the uh advocates and they help people that's exactly right so that's one of the things that i'd really like to encourage folks to do if you are in business if you are trying to build and if you're not just after the transaction but you're actually after a client you're after a relationship it is about being the educator and the advocate for your prospects and your customers success if you change your mindset you think about that and not say I'm here to sell my stuff or or not say I'm an expert, but instead say I'm an educator and I'm an advocate for the success of my prospects and my customers, because that's exactly the position that the Dave Ramsey's, the Dr. Oz's, the Susie Orman's put their self into their educators and advocates. They show genuine concern for the success of their, their, their listeners, their prospects, their customers. And in turn, they don't have to call themselves the experts. Who calls them the experts? Right. The people that listen to them automatically give them that title of expert. And that right there is authority. That is authority alchemy. Think of what was the definition? I know we had the definition, the official definition of alchemy. What yeah, was the, the definition for alchemy was uh, the, the uh, power process of changing something common into something very special. Back, you know, Most people can think of it back in the... Uh, the, the Middle Ages, when they were uh, trying to transform, you know, you know, common metals into gold. Um, so that's similar to this. That's what we're doing with uh, with authority taking. We want to take, uh, you know, regular people, find that something special in them, and bring it out and make them very special for this process of authority. And that's exactly it. I remember my mother when I was a kid. She used to tell me, "Jack, you're special, just like everyone else." <laughs> And that's the truth. So let's get down to the psychology, probably the biggest obstacles with people um, thinking about positioning themselves into um, or or putting themselves in that position of authority. One, there's a big, big obstacle, a big roadblock out there of folks saying or maybe thinking, you know what? I don't know really everything about my industry or what I do. I, I, I'm not really an expert now how do we get past that roadblock? Because really, there, is there anyone that knows everything? I mean, we just talked about the Dave no. Ramsey's there. They don't know everything. An expert doesn't need to know everything about their industry or their, their specialty. All right. right. So or there's, 
Yeah, well, I said there's different types. You can it depends on what your end goal is because this is a example where uh, the Jack and I for everybody that's listening was we just got off of a, uh, a marketers cruise, not not the big one, it was a smaller one. But there's two people there that I met. One is that the guy that's hosting it, which does you know a few million dollars a year off uh, showing people how to job seekers how to use LinkedIn. There's also a woman there who wrote the the most popular book. On LinkedIn and is one of the most popular speakers on it, and is one of the most knowledgeable people knowledgeable people on using LinkedIn to uh, you know for people to find jobs. The guy who knows far less than the other one makes a lot more money than the other. And she admitted that she he makes about you know ten you know ten to fifteen times more than she does. So they're both both considered experts, but if you once make a lot of money, once done, it it's, it has nothing to do with how much knowledge they have. The one that has more knowledge makes far less and she's much more professional <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, it's kind of, kind of a wild man but uh, so it doesn't matter and that's that's the first thing when i and i've done you know you know hundreds of these things for people this year um and that's one of the most common things to get when i first talk to people about it. they said well i'm wanting to do this but i don't know if i'm ready yet i just i don't know if i, I can just if i'm ready to claim that yet and it's just it, it's a tough thing to get past but really got to realize that if you are at the point where you can help somebody and make their business better, make their life better, get them past whatever pain they're having at that moment, you're going to be the hero to them. That's all they want. Nobody wants you, know, you to take them somewhere. Wants you, they want you to get them away from some pain they're having right then. If you have got can do that with your knowledge, you're already there. You're, the, you're an expert to them. And same thing with like with, uh, with me. When we were, right before this, this uh, cruise we went on, I had strep throat. We landed in in um, what Tampa Bay and uh, which one of those little you know quick ready clinics uh, to see a doctor he probably was not the best doctor in the world you know he's in some little you know barrio of, of this little uh, of, you know Tampa Bay and this little you know crappy uh, little you know little doctor wasn't the place. best part of town that's <laughs> no no it wasn't but I, I listened to every word he said and was very happy and he at that moment he was you know he was Einstein to me because he's the one that could get me the antibiotics and could help make me better. Um, so at that point, he was going to does the same thing. You don't have to be the best person in the world. He's not the best doctor in the world. He's not the probably the best you know, doctor in a one mile radius of the best <laughs> doctor on that at. street because apparently there was yeah. a lot of them. Yeah. Well, there were a lot, but he was he was he was good enough at that point, and he helped me with what um, he helped me what I needed help with. And that's you guys can do that now. There's uh, probably not a person listening right now that isn't at that point. Yeah. It, well, here's here's. This is an easy way to get over it, all right? One, um, we've already talked about, you don't have to call yourself the expert. That's one of the biggest things people have a problem with is, I, I can't call myself the expert. Well, guess what? Don't call yourself the expert. You don't have to call yourself the expert. Remember, it's about doing the things that allow others to call you the expert. And here's what my criteria for being an expert, being a guru, being an authority is, is criteria number one. Do you know more than your average prospect or your customer about your industry about what you are providing all right you don't have to know everything but you know more about your prospect of the person that you um, can help which is number two can you help can you help your prospects if you know more about your prospects generally about your subject if you can help your prospects when you can look a, a prospect in the eye and genuinely and confidently say i can help you and then third, and I think one of the most important pieces is, are you able and willing, right? So really able is second, but are you willing to help them? If you know more than your prospects, you're able to help your prospects, and you're willing to help your prospects, then you meet the criteria for being an expert. You certainly are above and beyond, and you display that above and beyond what a lot of your competitors do because i can promise you in just about any industry if you look at your competitors they're still in this mindset of look at me look at me look what i've done look what i've achieved look at the awards i've won look how long i've been in business look at me but when you are the educator and the advocate 
for your prospects and customers, you make it so easy for them to be the ones to call you the expert. And that's what they're looking for. They want someone that's going to be able to help them. I want you to look at any of your advertising, look at your marketing, look at the marketing of your competitors and see how many times they use the word I and we versus the word you. And I think you'll see exactly where one of the big problems is with people being able to claim, um, to be able to claim authority these days. And so that brings us to the, the, the next piece here. So that's how people can can think of themselves or meet that criteria for being an expert. Um, but the next thing that people really have a problem with here, Brian, is is they think that that's always something that's down the road. They think that if you know, for me to be for, for third party credible media to talk about me, to refer to me so that I get that that credibility, I have to work really hard for a long time in order to earn that credibility so that they can call me the expert. And what authority alchemy is really about is no, let's let's do it backwards. Let's get them to call you the expert and give you that credibility so that you can be seen as that in and very very quickly and i think that's one of the things that people get really surprised at how quickly they can be in that position of authority talk about that for a minute that really the disparity of the perception that people have that in order to be to claim authority is going to take me years it's something down the road it's a there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that i have to put together and then if i'm lucky i'll be recognized as authority versus let's get recognized immediately so that you can skip all that stuff and start Start going out there and being that educator and advocate. No, absolutely, and that comes to back to one of the phrases I use a lot when I'm when I'm explaining this to people, and it's just a perception is reality. As soon as you're perceived as an expert, you that you are to, as a, a expert in reality to everybody that sees you. It's a really it's a powerful powerful thing that I was I've been really surprised over the last you know last few years as I've been playing with this how how fast it works. Um, and it, one of the things it does take though is just, you know, taking some, you know, some actions. There's a you know, few things that, you know, we're going to talk about on this show of this uh, podcast over the, over the weeks, uh, giving you little tips on how to do this stuff. And there's some, it's amazing how fast these things can happen. But like, for example, the, at one of the uh, people that was, was a bona fide expert and they have got a seven figure business uh, in a, and I'll, I'll give the niche specifics, but they have been a, they're one of the you know, top people in their industry, just been killing it. And we did the, I did the same thing, one of the um, uh, authority projects for them. I got them featured a bunch of places, uh, a bunch of like uh, Wall Street Journal, ABC, NBC, all those uh, big media outlets. And they put, changed their, um, their uh, social media profile picture to include those logos and when they did that, they had one of the highest uh, commented on and liked pictures of the last, they said the last couple of years. That's one of the most popular things they've done, and they got business out of it for nothing more than just showing they were featured places. This is somebody that's a you know, you know, well-known person in their industry, and something as small as that just made a, made a you know, landslide a difference for them. Um, so that, and that's just, again, that's just a perception. It's just showing, showing everybody else that, hey, these third-party people say I'm cool also. It's not just our, you know, our little industry. So it's, a, it's some powerful, powerful things out there. And that can be done a lot quicker than, than a lot of people think. You know, I know some, oh, yeah. of, some of the times when we talk to clients, and, and I, it, always, it, it always kind of makes me chuckle when I hear that word down, the, the phrase down the road. Oh, that'll be great. We can do that down the road. You know, oh, that'll be great that I could be featured on, you know, some of these big media sites down the road or that I may be able to do radio down the road. And when I say, no, 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 down the road, I'm talking about in the next 48 hours. Yeah. And that's when they just really get, you know, it's, it's almost like the, 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 uh, the roller coaster just started clicking, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, they didn't realize that, you know, why wait? Why go through all that when you don't have to? Let's get recognized now for the authority that you are are because that's there's no need to wait some to, to people right. have that i've got to work towards no it's got to be harder than this it can't be you know I, i've got to pay more dues and it comes down to what we call you know actually we manufacture authority we manufacture celebrity but let's look at the realities what celebrity is not manufactured you know and and i hate Miley to say Cyrus. It, yeah yeah <laughs> 
Miley Cyrus Kardashian. <laughs> that's it, right? Yeah, that's right. Do, do you think, you know, did these people do anything? They, they, they fell down one day and they got back up and they were celebrity, right? Yeah. Through no fault yeah, of their own. They, uh, yeah, they just fell into it. Yeah, one of the things I always look at, and I'm, it's because I'm a, I'm a guy in Texas and every, everything comes back to a football analogy for me almost. But uh, this is the same thing. Like, like in a football game, you wouldn't, you, you don't go out there and say, okay, we're going to score. We're going to wait until you know, late in the game to start trying to score some touchdowns. You just you know, go out there, balls to the wall, and just try to start making them right away. And that's the same thing with this. You don't want to wait to get on a radio show. You're gonna, I can tell you, first time you go on a radio show, you're probably going to screw up. You're probably going to sound like an idiot. But it, it's not gonna, even it's not going to be as bad as you think it is. It's going to be worse to you. But um, you're still going to be on the radio. You're going to do it the first time. The first time you... Uh, you know, you know, get get interviewed by somebody on TV. You might might stumble a little bit. So what? So it's going to happen. You just have to go out there and just and just do it. Because one year sitting on the sidelines is just going to get you nothing. You're going to be the same place you were a year year ago. Uh, year you know year ago, and you're just going to be kicking yourself. No, that's it. You know that it 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 reminds me of uh like the uh like. You know, you use football. Football is a perfect na- analogy. You know, you could work all week on on practicing your special teams and and this situation and that situation. And the first kickoff, you receive it and you run it all the way back for a you know a ninety yard touchdown. Do you say, whoa, 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 time out? Let's do over. We practiced a lot more <laughs> stuff than that. That was too easy. We didn't deserve that. You know, when Mike Tyson used yeah. to go in and knock somebody out in thirty five seconds, do they say, whoa, I put in way too much work for this for it to be over this quick? It, it shouldn't have been that easy get back up let's do it again you know yeah. th- there's no reason don't don't make yourself or don't feel that you have to go through you know all this you know pain points or suffering in order to do it you know i often use yeah, one, I, I got a good little story about that it's one that um, uh, kevin nations always tells so I'll, I'll borrow this I'll borrow this from him hopefully i don't butcher it too bad but it was a uh, story about two two guys that are high school friends one goes on to become a dentist and one works at the local factory and uh, one guy, one of the guy that works at the local factory gets a really bad toothache, goes in and sees the dentist, looks at him, says, well, how much is that going to be to get my, my tooth fixed? He goes, oh, that'll be about $5,000. And uh, the guy that works at the factory goes, wow, that's, you know, that's, a, that's a lot of money. How long is that going to take? And the dentist says, well, it's going to be about, about 10 minutes. And he goes, well, $5,000, God, I make like you know, $10 an hour. That's you know, you know, a couple months worth of salary for me. He says, you know, you know, why is that so expensive for such a short amount of time? And the dentist said, well, if you want, I can take a lot longer to pull your tooth out. So it's the <laughs> yeah. same same thing that you know. You just it's uh, it, it's okay to go for, to, to have things fast. You don't have to suffer and wait. Uh, you know, suffer through you know, the agony to get to the same place. If you can get it faster, and that's what we're talking about with this authority aquas of how we're able to manufacture this and get it done much quicker. That that that's exactly it. And I think you know one of the analogies I use, and and I think uh, one that. Uh, hopefully can kind of sum it up and one thing you're going to find brian and i like we like analogies you know we we, we stories they they work out better because we don't know any big words to to make us sound smart so <laughs> but is is you can work a long time to uh to learn how to be you know what, what is it the guy that's the the archery the archer you know the guy the the, the bow and arrow let's keep it simple right you can work mm-hmm. a long time to be a master at archery and you can set up your target and you can practice you can practice and you can aim and it may take months it may take you years for you to hit the center of that bullseye but what we're saying is there is a way that you can display your authority to display your expertise and we're not trying to convince anyone to to fool people right this is just we get it out there get in front of people but what we want to show you how to do is instead let's shoot your arrow and then paint the bullseye around it afterwards and that's much easier and it's a much quicker way to be able to do this to claim that authority that um, uh, you really do deserve and so the reason that we wanted to dedicate this first episode around the mindset and around getting you thinking what authority is, whether than, than giving you all these old tactics that you can use to do that, is because we know that you would sit on them waiting for down the road when you deserved to 
uh, use them. We're saying right now, if you can look a prospect, a customer in the eye and confidently say, I can help you and you have information and you're willing and able to share that information, you're willing and able to better your customers' lives, your customers' business, then you deserve to claim that authority. And remember, it's not about you calling yourself the expert. It's about doing the things that are required, doing the right things so that others can, and you can make it easy for others to be able to call you the expert, to call you the guru, to call you the authority. And when you do that in that the right way, then it comes much quicker and much easier than you ever could have imagined. So, you know, Brian, bottom line is that's what authority alchemy is, is what was that definition again? Turning something ordinary and common into something special, right? Right. That's right. exactly. So teach me how to do that. And then uh, you know, how to leverage it all. Because we're not, we're also not saying to go out and get this stuff and do nothing with it. There's, there's ways you leverage this stuff, ways you leverage these uh, media appearances or you know, leverage having a, a book. Well, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk about those things also because that, that's an important part of it. If you go and do this, it's cool. You're not bragging on yourself, but you're, you're sharing that you're sharing your successes in a humble way works extraordinarily well. Exactly. You can't just put on the Batman costume. You got to know what to do with it, right? You got to know what you to do. Know to do to those, little batarang. That's right. You with those uh, utility belts. So that's what we're going to be going through um, with this podcast. And what we're going to be going through is is sharing ways for you to claim your authority, for sharing ways for you to position yourself as that educator and that advocate to get yourself out there through social media, through the internet, um, through even offline methods, for you to position yourself as that that educator and advocate, and also for you to quickly uh, be able to. Uh, put yourself in a position for third party everywhere from your clients prospects all the way up to big media credible third party sources to recognize you you that as that authority so you don't have to uh, call yourself the expert now brian if we were men of preparation we'd have something for them to 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 do right now as we wrap this up and 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 let them ponder on what we've talked about today um yeah. what can they do for one itunes if you're listening to this um go to itunes look for authority alchemy on there we'll have a link on the site which is authority um and do us a favor subscribe on itunes and review the show let us know um if you like this and and if it helps you, because that's exactly what we're doing, is is we're being exactly what we are showing you how to do, being educators and advocates for your success. So that's what we'd like to do. iTunes, subscribe, review it, but also on the authorityalchemy.com. If you're listening to it on there, downloading the audio, share this out with others. Share it out on Facebook, on Twitter, on, uh, on LinkedIn. And uh, that's how you can... Uh, let us know that uh, this is really making a difference in in your life and your business. Anything else that you want to share with them, Brian, before we uh, wrap up this episode? I guess one last thing. I know we, we gave a bunch of little calls to action for this. But one thing I, I would like is in the comments section of this one, maybe give us some ideas of what you'd like to know about for some future episodes. We've got we've got a good list of of uh, some branding hacks and authority tips and some you know, you know cool techniques that we already have listed up but if there's things out that you guys are wanting to know about that'd be it'd be great to hear about that on there oh yeah absolutely and believe me we we got a a, a big old bucket of things because this could have turned into a five-hour um podcast if we oh, yeah. uh, dove in so but we want to make sure that you get past the mindset get past you know being able to accept that that authority and once you get that right watch out put on the seat belt because some big things are going to start happening. So with that, absolutely. Cause thanks for coming through to uh, authority alchemy. Our very first episode, we made it through Brian. Um, and we'd like to, to uh, give the impression that we put a ton of preparation and script writing into this, but what you hear is what you get. This is us coming genuinely from our hearts and from our heads, letting you know the real deal of what it takes to be authority. So I guess until next time, I'll sign off as Jack Mize. Brian, you got uh, the last word. And I'm Brian Horn. All right, I'm Brian Horn. Thank you so much for listening to Authority Alchemy, and we will see you next week.